Right, we're about to embark on the fourth walk. Today's walk covers approximately 800 million light years, filling a sphere 1.6 billion light years across. We will encounter the nearest galaxies, galaxy groups and clusters, superclusters, filaments and walls. At this scale, the entirety of yesterday's walk fits inside a one meter wide beach ball. The Milky Way isn't much bigger than this, and its center is very close to the sun. If you want to think of that one meter wide beach ball as the Milky Way on this walk, you won't go far wrong. At arm's length, we have the small and large Magellanic Clouds, 5 and 10 centimeters across, respectively. The Magellanic Clouds are satellite galaxies of the Milky Way. They are visible from the Southern Hemisphere. In fact, they are some of the brightest objects in the sky, and in the sky appear larger than the Moon. Taking our first steps, we get to the center of the local group. The local group is 70 meters wide at this scale. A group is what it sounds like, a group of galaxies, some tens of galaxies. In the universe, objects clump together under the force of gravity at larger and larger scales in a hierarchical fashion. Think of a star system versus a star cluster versus a galaxy. Group is the next one up from that. The local group's center of gravity sits between the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, which in turn form the centers of two lobes in the dumbbell-shaped local group. At 17 meters, we reach the Andromeda Galaxy, otherwise known as Messier 31. It's 1.5 meters wide at this scale, about the size of a person. Andromeda is the largest galaxy in the local group. It is also visible in the night sky and larger than the moon, despite being much further away than the Magellanic Clouds. At just under 19 meters, we get to the Triangulum Galaxy, otherwise known as Messier 33. Triangulum is the third largest galaxy in the local group. It's 41 centimeters wide, about the length of yesterday's walk. Triangulum is also visible in the night sky and also larger than the moon. At 23 meters, we get to the Wolf Lundmark, Malot Galaxy, five centimeters across at this scale, the size of an avocado pit. Wolf Lundmark Malot is very remote. It sits right on the outer edge of the local group. As far as we know, it has never interacted with any other galaxies, making it pristine and giving us a clearer picture of galaxy formation in a vacuum. The ESO has described it as like a hidden human population with limited contact with outsiders. At 70 meters, we get to MAFE-1 and IC-342, both about 50 centimeters across. MAFE-1 and IC-342 are like the Andromeda and Milky Way of the MAFE group, the nearest group to our own. I've not drawn it on the map here because I don't know how big it is, but a group tends to be three to seven million light years wide. Uh, most galaxies in the universe are in a group. At 90 meters, we've got the sculptor group. I've drawn it here at 40 meters across to illustrate the typical width of a group. That is to say, two megaparsecs or 6.5 million light years. At uh, about the same distance, we have Centaurus A, just under 70 centimeters wide at this scale. Centaurus A is a starburst galaxy. It's the fifth brightest galaxy in the sky. Uh, Centaurus A is in the Centaurus A group. At 110 meters, we get to Messier 94, 30 centimeters across at this scale. Messier 94 is a galaxy in the Messier 94 group. It's, uh, at least according to a 2008 study, very unusual in that it contains no dark matter. A galaxy shouldn't be able to form without dark matter, so if the study is corroborated after all, it will be a bit of a mystery. Maybe one day we will know. At 180 meters, we get to the Canis II group, 60 meters across at this scale, the largest galaxy of which is Messier 106, about the same size as Andromeda. Messier 106 is one of the brightest galaxies in the sky. It was discovered in 1781. It's characterized by dense and warm water vapor gas, turning it purple. Unlike most spiral galaxies, it has two pairs of arms, where the second pair of arms is made of gas. No one knows why, but the accepted theory is it's caused by something happening in the supermassive black hole at the center of Messier 106. 
At uh, 370 meters, we get to the Virgo cluster, which is 140 meters across at this scale. What's a cluster? A cluster is supposedly a group of groups, but in reality, there's no clear line between a group and a cluster. They're about the same size. Clusters are bigger than groups. Like groups, clusters are gravitationally bound and will eventually collapse in on themselves. The Virgo cluster is shaped like a flat disk, a bit like a galaxy, and it sits at the center of the Virgo supercluster, the local supercluster we are in. At 410 meters, we get to the Ursa Major Cluster, 110 meters long at this scale and 40 meters wide. The Ursa Major Cluster contains the Messier 109 group, which contains Messier 109, a barred spiral galaxy just under twice as wide as the Milky Way, larger in other words than Andromeda. Messier 109 is the most distant object in the Messier catalog. It is 83 million light years away. Discovered in 1781, Messier 109 can be seen in the night sky as a faint smudge with binoculars. At 440 meters, we get to the center of the Virgo supercluster, which is 730 meters wide at this scale. What is a supercluster? Great question. So here's the thing. Drawing circles on this map isn't quite right at this scale. It works very well for things like planets and stars and galaxies and groups and clusters, but superclusters don't work quite the same way. At this scale, if you want circles, it's better to think in terms of where matter isn't rather than where it is. We're getting to the scale where the universe is structured like a sponge, a sponge being composed mostly of bubbles. In the universe, these bubbles are called voids. Voids are enormous, typically hundreds of millions of light years across, in other words, the scale of today's walk. We'll talk about voids a little bit later. In the gaps between voids, we find what are called walls. Walls are made of filaments, and superclusters, like the Virgo supercluster, are simply where walls and filaments meet each other. A supercluster is ostensibly a cluster of clusters, but unlike groups and clusters, superclusters are not gravitationally bound, being rather the mark left over of events that happened billions of years ago. Superclusters are transition objects that reflect their initial conditions. If you've ever seen a slow motion video of a water balloon being popped, you'll know that for a fraction of a second, the water retains the shape of the balloon before falling away. The individual parts of a supercluster will, over billions of years, drift away from each other, pulled apart by the expansion of the universe, just as the water in a water balloon will eventually fall into a puddle as soon as the balloon is popped. At 1.2 kilometers, we get to the Hydra Centaurus supercluster. The Hydra Centaurus supercluster is made of three clusters, Hydra, Centaurus, and Antlia. Hydra Centaurus is a lobe in the larger Laniakea supercluster, which we'll talk about very soon. At 1.4 kilometers, we get to the Great Attractor. We'll talk about the Great Attractor in a bit. We don't know what it is, where it is, or how big it is, but the best candidate is in fact the Norma Cluster, a cluster of some thousands of galaxies with a total mass of about 10 quadrillion solar masses, which sits in the Pavo Indus supercluster, which we encounter at 1.5 kilometers. Pavo Indus supercluster is 1.5 kilometers wide at this scale. At 1.7 kilometers, we get to the center of the Laniakea supercluster, which is 3.4 kilometers wide at this scale. It's rather large. Laniakea is our local supercluster. The Great Attractor is its center of gravity. We'll talk about Laniakea and the Great Attractor very soon, but before we do, let's just quickly visit the Coma supercluster here at two kilometers. Coma is 130 meters wide at this scale. It is a neighbor of Laniakea. The Coma supercluster is the center of the Great Wall, also known as the Coma Wall. The Coma Wall is 750 million light years long. In other words, about the length of today's walk. We'll talk about walls on the next walk. In the meantime, let's talk about voids, the bubbles in the sponge of the universe. What are they? How do they form? In the very early days of the universe, in the first 400,000 years, 
The universe is, in a word, a dense plasma of free-floating photons, electrons, and protons. This plasma is almost entirely homogeneous, but a bit like a weather system, it has high pressure cells, with clumps of dark matter at their center, which draw baryonic matter toward them. The photons, however, create an outward pressure force that counteracts this gravitational pull. The result is a system that oscillates, creating sound waves. These sound waves carry some matter with them as they propagate outward in a sphere around these high pressure cells. These spheres expand at roughly half the speed of light until at about 400,000 years, electrons and protons have enough space to recombine into hydrogen atoms. At this point, they stop moving and you're left with enormous spherical shells about 400,000 light years across around the point where they started. These shells expand as the universe expands. Today, they should be about 500 million light years across on average. And indeed, it turns out that is about how big the voids are on average. Voids can be as small as 30 million light years across or as large as 3 billion light years across. So let's talk about Lanier Kea. The Lanier Kea supercluster was discovered in 2014 by a team led by R. Brent Tully of the University of Hawaii. Their work specified a novel definition of a supercluster in terms of the relative velocities of galaxies. Within a supercluster, that relative motion will tend inward toward the center of mass, in our case, the Great Attractor. When we look at very distant celestial objects, there is an element of their velocity relative to us that is very consistent across the universe called the Hubble flow. That's caused by the expansion of the universe itself. In a word, the farther something is from us, the faster it's moving away from us. Any element of an object's velocity relative to us that isn't accounted for by the Hubble flow is called its peculiar velocity. There is a certain distance up to which we can measure the peculiar velocity of very large, very bright objects such as galaxies. A number of surveys have shown that out to that distance, about half a billion light years, scale of today's walk, everything we can see is moving toward a point somewhere between 150 and 250 million light years away. I've put it on the map here at the average 200 million light years, but the most recent and probably most reliable estimate is 250 million light years right at the center of Lanier Kea. Now surely I hear you say an object immense enough to draw everything in Lanier Kea toward it would be quite visible. Indeed, one should think it were. Unfortunately, the Great Attractor lies in the so-called zone of avoidance. We can't see it because the Milky Way is in the way. So we don't know what it is, we don't know what it looks like, and most importantly, we don't actually know where it is either. When we measure the peculiar velocities of distant objects, we run into Malmquist bias. The farther things are from us, the more we can see through them, and therefore the farther away they look. This discrepancy makes a big difference in the position of the Great Attractor. So we don't know what it is, we don't know how big it is, we don't know where it is. All we know is that everything in Lanier Kea is moving toward it, but not fast enough to hold the supercluster together. Lanier Kea is already dispersing. The things in it are moving away from each other faster than they are moving toward each other. Which brings us to the Shapley supercluster at 4.4 kilometers. Perhaps better to refer to it as the Shapley concentration as it is, unlike other superclusters, gravitationally bound. It is in fact the largest gravitationally bound object that we know of. 1.4 kilometers wide at this scale, it is an enormous overdensity some 650 million light years away outside the Lanier Kea supercluster toward which everything in Lanier Kea, including the Great Attractor, is moving. At 4.8 kilometers, at the end of our walk, we get to the center of the Pisces Cetus supercluster complex. The Pisces Cetus supercluster complex is nearly seven kilometers long at this scale. It's what's called a galaxy filament, a long thread of superclusters. Specifically, it's the filament that we are in. That's all we're going to see on this walk. On the next walk, we shall encounter the largest objects in the universe, but we shall talk about them 